guitar players, you know I have a big-ass amp wall back there, and usually I'm all for analog and pedals and all that stuff, but realistically, sometimes that just doesn't work, because it's a lot of money. I mean, a lot of money. And sometimes you might need something on the go, on vacation, on the train, on the plane, um, in a studio somewhere where you don't have your stuff. There's many reasons to go digital. And... I always have a little bit of a problem with going computer digital, modeling software, uh, because of latency issues. I do have an Apollo X4 and an Apollo 8, uh, but going through Cubase uh, or some kind of uh, software adds latency because of the way that I usually have the chain. And I'm going to talk about this, uh, which means you go, you do uh, um, monitoring through a channel, but then it goes through a master channel and every plugin you add adds latency. Well, I circumvented that by simply going out direct and I'll show you in a sec. But what we're looking at today is Blue Cat Audios or Blue Cat's Axiom. This thing is insane. Some stuff in the world is easy. You know, they go for three knobs, all good. This is the opposite. This is, let me throw the freaking truck of options at you. You can go and use presets, which is fine, which is pretty much what I've done. But then I tweaked them and I quickly got to being able to tweak them exactly the way I wanted. But what you usually expect, you know, pedal, amp, speaker, all this is a little bit different here because it combines certain products from them in one box. Their amp simulation, which is called Destructor, uh, their amazing delay, which is called, what is it called again? Multi, multi what is it called? Late replies. Not my, there's a multiple thing in there too. And uh, to make matters better or worse, the whole setup is in there twice. So you can actually morph two complete different setups. Talking about morphing, you can literally morph from one to the other by just moving a target and more from one setup to a completely different setup. There's craziness in there. So let me try to guide you through it in a very non-scripted, totally chaotic way. You with me? Oh, let's jump into it. Oh, I mean, I'm in it. So the way I am doing this, and that's not the way that you might be doing it, is I'm in the input section of Cubase, meaning that's right where the sound comes in. So everything I do is written in stone. I can't change it later. I do this so that every tweak I do is actually recorded. Otherwise, it wouldn't be. So um, you would probably record on a track like up here, you know. So you would record that DI and have Axiom on the actual channel. Uh, I have... Axiom in the input section right here um, on a stereo input input for which I actually had to split my guitar second and go in stereo just so that we can enjoy the stereoness of the plugin. You can download it from their website. There's a demo, so you know no no risk. If you don't like it, you don't like it. Um, so the way I'm doing it is I'm monitoring through a channel here in Cubase which I call Blue Cat, and it's blue. Uh, you can't see it. Let's see, make, oh, haha, oh, let's see, it's on it. Let's see, switching a little bit differently today. And this is on monitor, as you can see here with the orange. And this is going out of something called GIT, guitar, which is going to a virtual uh, output in my console, right here, virtual one, two, you see? so that I'm not going through anything in Cubase other than into the plugin and straight out again, and that is the fastest way to get the lowest latency. And it's so low that uh, I literally don't care. And um, let's actually see what my settings are here. Well, my settings are 256 uh, samples. Uh, once I looked at the settings, the recording stopped because, well, I gotta record, yeah? So I'm recording my voice right here and the guitar there. Okay, so this is the software. There's an input section, uh, which right now you can see has a gate on it. There's an input volume and an output volume. Really, really tiny things up there. Um, I might be able to make this a little bit bigger because there's a magnifying glass and you have 
increments to make this bigger and smaller. That's probably, let's go to 160. There we go. Um, but I also have an input slider here and an output slider. Can you follow me so far? So on the input, kind of probably good for everything that's happening in the middle, I can put four plugins. And here's the kicker, not just internal plugins. Right now, this is the gate from Axiom, from Blue Cat. But if I wanted to, look at this, VST, AU, VST3, I can load any VST3 plugin. I could load AccuFiend, their um, feedback plugin, but I could also load my Mark EQ4, and bam, there's my Mark EQ4 now in the input section. I can use any VST plugin in here. How cool is that? Well, of course, using a gate is smart. So clicking on the on off turns that on and off. Clicking on here brings up the editor. Uh, if I want to get rid of that, either uh, here and then no plugin. This drop down menu uh, happens a lot, which is probably one of the things that bugs me a little bit. But we get to that. Um, so. For, uh, for example, if you want to load something here, you click on it, and then this drop-down menu comes. Um, I can, again, before the amp is pre-effects, and behind the amp is post-effects. In the middle is the amp, which is their destructor plugin. Now, if I want to put any of these six pedals here, I click on it, I can, again, load anything I want in here. I can put in a Vox Continental organ if I want that. I don't have a lot of plugins. SPL's Dverb. Let's open that. And now I have SPL's Dverb, for whatever reason, <laughs> in my chain. Of course, I don't want that. Uh, click on here. You don't click on the number. You click on the name. Bam. So I could go ahead and select from their list of things. Let's put an echo there. Done. That simple. Simple delay. Of course, you can turn that on and off. You can move that around in any way you want. Easy. Um, you have a whole effects strip. So the whole pedal board in front of your amp, your pre-pedal board, you could load that here we go, 12, 12 string and chorus. Uh, probably should go to a clean amp. Let's do that. Clean. Uh, here, AC. Let's, let's see what that sounds like. What is this? It brings up late replies, which is just extremely complex, and we're going to look at it briefly in a sec. Uh, there's the chorus, which is, you know, easier to understand. Let's see what other pedal boards they have. Digisynth bass. <laughs> Latency is actually really good. It doesn't bother me at all. Mutable preverb. Oh, there's a tuner, which you turn on, and it actually works really nice. Uh, this is a American Ultra Strat HSS. What else do we have? Yeah, 
You can sync it, of course, to, what is this? Sync is on, uh, to the sequence, which is great, because then a, tre a tremolo actually makes sense, so I can have eight uh, dotted eighth. <laughs> And deface probably moves the zero point down. I love that. Um, then, of course, you can just probably by using, yep, by using the arrows, go through the preset. Obviously, the same thing applies to post effects. Ooh, but they look different. Hey, Digital Echoes 2. say when it comes to cleans uh, especially in a production setting these types of software uh, solutions are killer there's a lot of stuff you can do in here that you wouldn't be able to do with an amp setup um, ambiences there's a lot <laughs> That's divine. So, you can of course go to factory presets on the amp in the middle, which will, ah, no, okay, now, which will again uh, get you a whole, there's also bass stuff, um, drop down menu, loads of different amps, crunch, crunch 2, crunch plus, drive, drive 2, uh, FX y stuff. But if you want to change everything, you go up here, factory presets, and there's stuff that will change the whole thing. So you can change the pre-board, the post-board, and the amp. There's, of course, presets for the input strip. Look at that. Acoustic sim. That's kind of cool. A little bit loud. What's happening here? That's destructor. So it loaded destructor into the input. I am so confused. No, I'm not. This is cool. Um, but you can change, of course, a whole thing. Let's look at something here. Um, Lux vibe. Bam. So now it changed the whole thing. <laughs> Now, of course, I can go in and say, well, I would actually like some distortion. Uh, we're going to put a blue drive there. You get the idea. Um, I like the categories, clean, clean with effects, crunch, crunch with effects, crunch beta. what is that?
And as you can see, there's also post effects. So after everything, it's going kind of like in a studio through late replies, which again, we're looking at later. Then there's uh, drives, FX. I don't know what that does. Kind of detuned and why not? Um, high gain. And then they have something called Guitar Legends, which is kind of cool. So if you, if you want to get to a whole lot of rhythm, Santana. Let's let's see what Santana is. Um, not a, not a bad tone at all. Included in Axiom is actually their re-guitar, which I will cover in a separate video. So just so you, so you know, uh, you can load re-guitar in the input. In FX, there's re-guitar. And what that does is, I literally have not played with this at all, but you kind of get an idea. I'm saying I'm coming from a single coil, they want to go to a classic hamburger. That can't work, right? I literally have not tried this. So you can change the way that your pickup sounds. Um. It looks like you're actually changing the tone knob. going to look at re-guitar in a separate video in depth. So I'm going to go and get rid of that. So, um, so far, all clear. Let's look at some of the plugins we have in general. There's different uh, delays, echo, multi-tap delay, and late replies. Late replies can be a billion things. We're going to look at that in a sec. Different distortions. There's uh, only one fuzz for you crazy fuzz people, but Destructor is the amp plugin kind of, so that uh, you could even, if you wanted to, load Destructor, which is kind of in the middle, uh, fully into uh, each slot if you wanted to. It's The, the uh, modularity is absolutely crazy. Um, no plugin. So, um, different distortions. Uh, dynamics, and again, Destructor, because it also has Dynamics built in. Uh, filtering, IR loading, built-in effects. Frequency shifter, harmonizer, phase shifter. There's the re-guitar. And remember, folks, you can load this into any channel in your DAW, which means there's also settings for drums. Anything you want to do in here doesn't just apply to guitar, you can do that to anything. You don't even have to have a guitar amp on. You can run a really cool drum loop through a you know frequency shifter or whatever. It's all doable. Um, modulation, sweep filter, I love sweep filters. And so on. Um, no plugin. I wish there was an off button just like to, to kill it. You have to go in the drop down menu. Um, utilities, 
tuna pan. There's a tuna. Look. I mean, it's built into the thing, but there's also the hot tuna, which, by the way, you can get for nine bucks separately for your DAW if you wanted that. The hot tuna is a separate plugin you can get. Um, uh, mid side decode, mid side encode, panning, blah, blah, blah. All freaking there. Let's load up something else and then we go into the destructor section. Let's go into drive and why not? Sounds a little bit harsh. A lot of the um, presets have reverb on them and I would, you know, I, in a production I, on rhythms and stuff, I usually wouldn't. So I'm going to turn that down a bit here. What does this do? Limiter is on. We like that. And of course, you can make it more modern. So generally, and you can see that on the settings, on digital, the more high end you hear, the more it will sound fizzy uh, and digital, which is why usually on these, you can see that the tone is rolled off to the left and the treble is rolled off a little bit. Because that doesn't sound good. And they know that. And there's a compressor here, which will turn off. So, why is this still out of tune? This amp section here is coming from Destructor. And you can go to Edit, and it brings up Destructor. Now, this has a gate, which can be very helpful. I picked a, picked a different amp here, the other one's a little bit scratchy. Uh, gate, and then we have compression, all built into Destructor. You have your preamp, you have your destruction, which is kind of, you know, the, the drive. So they're splitting it up into preamp and drive separately, which on an amp usually isn't, you don't have this. And then post filter, which is the speaker. They just don't call it that. So, uh, this is the easy interface. Bass, middle, treble, tone, gain. And then there's drive here. And you can change that. And look at that. There are different things, again, for each individual module in terms of presets. Tons of them. Different set, what the crap, and dynamics, and different distortions. Different ways of clipping. Asymmetrical, strong asymmetrical, bumping grit, what the crap. So instead of calling it, this is a Mesa, which I love that they're not doing this, they're really going into the detail. So just use your ears. Find the thing that you like. That's a lot of gain. can even mix in the drive. And then this is your cap, which you can EQ as well. well sounds are just great. So we have a, what a 50, 150-ish kind of a preamp, but not the drive from it. The drive is from, I don't quite understand this fully, but the possibilities are there. Now, if you want to go nuts, you can look behind the curtain. You click E, and all of a sudden you see the EQ curve that this actually represents. There. And you can go even nutterer. <laughs> That's a kick-ass lead sound right there, or mid-scooped. 
That's not a lot of fun. Uh, so, um... Okay, want to look behind the derive curtain? Ba-doink! That's utterly ridiculous. There's a compression and symmetrical or asymmetrical and how smooth shit is and how it's rectified and let me... I, uh, the bit depth? What the? You can see how it's compressing for lord's sake. So this is the in-depth uh, interface, which again, you never have to look at. Just do that. Or don't even do that. Just look at the main interface. So technically, you can look at this, and it's all you need. There's gain, there's drive. All good. You can totally handle this like your amp. I want a little bit more control, bam, and you go here, and you have a little bit more control over the individual sections. You just have to understand preamp, what the thing that makes it distort, and then here, the post filter, which technically is the cap. Well, you can see that by clicking here, select factory basics, bass caps and guitar caps, and here you can pick caps, and pretty much what they are is a frequency response. So let's say I want a 212. Yep, greenbacks. Bam. And that looks like so. So don't look for the representation of a speaker with a mic in front of it. That's not what it is. It's they go to the very end. What does it sound like? It's not it's that speaker blah blah blah. It is if you have that speaker with that mic blah 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 blah. blah this is the frequency response curve and that's what they're showing you. Um, which makes total sense. It's a little bit nerdy, but why not? Whoa, that's a lot of them. Again, a lot of them. Um, 212 Rock 66. I have a 5150 tone stack preamp uh, with a AC drive and all of a sudden with the 212 Rock 66 it sounds super brutal. Let's go 412 green what is that? I don't know. None of that means I can't change it, by the way. That's gonna be horrible. is utterly ridiculous how quickly you can get to am to amazing uh, settings but you understand that all this ultra flexibility doesn't mean you have to use it don't be discouraged by it again i show you you can just be here pick an amp 
Metallic silence. I don't know what that is. What that means. We want something heavier. I go to here. High gain. Metal. That sounds good. Okay, not fully my thing, so I'm going to change the way that it is thought by going, I don't know, this thing? I don't like this cab. Going to go 212, red wide. <laughs> So, um, this is obviously all utterly ridiculous in terms of how much possibilities are there. You can, of course, click up here and have the preset guide. We can go to clean with effects. So that's pretty much doing what I can do up there over here. I really like the dancing chords. I think I used that before in, in the song. Um, there's some great stuff. I don't know. Oh, here, Shimmer. At, uh... <laughs> It's good. Uh, and A presets and B presets, post effects, pre effects. All so this is what we had before. The stuff you can load up here, you can load here. Pre pedal controls. Now, what does that do? Instead of clicking on the pedal to control it, you actually can control it right here without having to go to a second window. Depending on what you like. If you like. A more classic representation go for that if this is good for you you can do that uh, then there's of course the same thing for the post pedals this is the tools rack I have no idea what this is let's not even go there uh, <laughs> assigned controls those are when you have MIDI assignments and it shows you what that is now two things we need to cover and then we're kind of through we could do this for hours. Um, one thing is the absolutely insane tone map feature. And the way this is, wo uh, is working is they're putting certain presets into the tone map and then you can morph between them. And you don't have to worry about if that goes from one amp to the other or from one cap to the other or from one effect to the other. It simply picks, picks a medium. So the way that this works is Let's look at this. Uh, not drums, digital mess, drum fatness, expression and gates, lo-fi. Um, for example, speaker distortion. I pick a tiny speaker. And in the back, it's picking that preset. Moving to a kitchen speaker. Moving to a one watt speaker. Or anywhere in between. And the way this works, let's see if we can actually see this. See how it's actually controlling all the different parameters at the same time? That's crazy. See, it actually moved closer to the bright rock now changing the amp. 
like the one I had before you get the idea you could build some of your own and build your own tone map here's British guitar amps that is a great idea right Brett 412 <laughs> So don't think about the amp, think about the sound. And I move a little bit over here and I don't care what's happening in the background. Okay, classic guitar amps, AC crunch, there we go. I zoomed in too much. Here we go. Still not quite sure how I zoom in. So now I can actually, between the custom tweet and the AC, so this tone map is really 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 cool uh, late replies is under delays and that's something they sell by themselves by itself by them this they also by themselves and this is a delay but it can also be other things. It is a multi-step delay, multi. And depending on, I, I haven't figured out the interface all the way yet. Let's do rhythmic. Echoes, multi-tap. Because you can again, in these blocks, load in other effects, even other VSTs. And then there are feedback loops, and up here are tappies. But I want to find something that's just crazy. Here, yeah, tempo sync. I had. Why can't I find the crazy stuff? There's a tremolo on the first delay, there's a tremolo on the second delay, but there's also a multi-tap on the first repeat. That happens when I play shitty. Um, yeah, let's go here to sci-fi because that stuff, that stuff's crazy. Here, here you can see, that's what I want to show you. There are, there are eight replies, so there are eight repeats. And on each of the repeats, we have a different plugin. On the first one, we have an EQ. On the second one, we have a bit crusher. On the third one, we have a chorus. Uh, after that, a pitch shifter, flanger, wave shaper, comp filter, compressor. Um, that is utterly ridiculous. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I'm going to tell you that the late replies alone is worth the price of admission. Let's find some cool stuff here. Um Yes, folks, that is what an eventide would do. Um, there's a harmonizer on each of the repeats, which means as it steps through in time, 
you have pitchy stuff. Ten percent modulation. Here, patterns rhythmic. Oh my God, how many freaking presets are there? Can anyone say the edge? That's just awesome. Where was that? Rhythmic. Uh, feel the groove. Too simple, too simple. We want more crazy shit. The reverbs on shimmer, shimmer. This is included. The re guitar is included. All the amps, all the effects, everything is included. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. We haven't even. I'm, I'm gonna just throw that in there. Everything can be there twice. So I'm gonna show you. Factory presets, clean effects. We do clean chorus right there. <laughs> Okay, I don't even know where the chorus is. Ah, oh, it's in the end. And then I turn on B, and on B, I'm gonna call up Guitar Drive. I don't know what that is. Oh no, wait. I gotta do A, clean, nope. Clean with effects. I'm with you. What? A. That's good. So now I go in to B and add the crunch. We're gonna put on some delay here too, just for fun. Okay, so now I have my AB right here, and I can actually morph or mix between two completely different setups. So you just, you just click on the frame of B, let's get that volume wise where I want it. So a lush clean and kind of a delayed drive and I can go a b 50 50 if I wanted that it's crazy it's a multi amp setup with multi effects or you pan one a little bit to the right and one a little bit to the left, and you have, imagine the possibilities. Yeah, two different not just amps, 
two different everythings panned, two different everythings mixed. If I did a full series on Axiom, I'd be here for freaking days. It's all there. The rig guitar, the, the, the super in-depth, the not in-depth, all the pre-effects, all the post-effects. Don't even forget that any VST or AU plugin or audio units plugin, you can put into the input, the master, the pre-effects, the post-effects. The whole thing twice. And then, you know, you can go in and dial in exactly the drive if that's what, you know, gets you going. Um, there's the tone map, which is utterly ridiculous. Those French people are slightly crazy, and I think this is probably way under the radar of most people. Now, how much sense does it make for you? I recorded the track in the beginning with it, and usually I'm not super excited about digital stuff in when it's stacked, but it's there. I would fully leave that song the way it is, and I originally recorded it with big-ass amps, and I'm very happy with it, but especially when it comes to effects load and things when it comes to things with all these delays and filterings uh, especially cleans this thing shines getting these sounds with an analog traditional setup especially in stereo thousands i would have to spend and even then what late replies does i wouldn't be able to do what re late replies does is literally mind-blowing um it works. I'm okay with the latency. It totally feels normal to me. The sounds are great. Uh, is it going to replace your favorite metal amp? I don't know. Probably not. But let's look at the price point. Because I think this thing is around 200 bucks, Including everything I've shown you. Um, I like the amp models or uh, amp simulations in the Universal Audio platform. It's good stuff. There's no question about it. You can load it straight into the Universal Audio Console. Okay. Um, right here, I can go ahead and load an amp. And it plays with almost no latency. But each of those Universal Audio amps, which is literally one amplifier, and maybe it has a built-in delay, is the same amount of money as everything you've just seen. For me... A lot of these drop-down menus get a little bit annoying, like this drop-down and then over, but it's just a matter of, it's just a side effect of all the possibilities. How else would you do it? You have to have sub-menus, um, but once you understand that the layers up there where I am right now, that's the layer for everything, but then everything has a sub-layer, and so on and so on. Once you start understanding that, you're all good. So. If you don't want to fiddle with a lot of things, this is still for you because just go with presets, tweak it, done. If you want to go ultra, ultra, ultra in depth, you can because you're a nerd. For the money, there's almost no reason not to have this on your computer just for the cleans and just for the late replies, pumping that into a virtual, uh, you know, jazz chorus or, or black phase or something, something clean and have those amazing ear candy kind of sounds. Guillaume from Blue Cat chased me for quite a while, wrote me email after email, can we do something? And I was never in the mood to do software because it's a complicated video setup, as you can see. Um, but I got to say, that freaking French nerd, I'm hyper impressed. It sounds good and I can go as deep as I want without... Uh, without taxing myself. If you want to go all the way and you actually want to learn late, late replies as well, which I can't even, I haven't even started looking at that user interface to understand it. That's a steep learning curve. If you really want to understand everything that Axiom can do, it's a steep, steep learning curve. Um, I don't know if you want to go there, but you don't have to. Download the trial, download the demo, play with it, see, see how you like it. I'm pretty damn impressed. Thank you for commissioning this video, Guillaume. This is very nice of you. Um, if you, uh, you know, you heard what, what you heard, please check it out yourself. Don't believe me. Believe your own ears. And, um, yeah, thanks to Leslie for switching this. And we're going to put links below 
Uh, also, please go support me on Patreon. Please sign up on Instagram. That's really important for me working with brands. Instagram is important. Facebook is important. All that stuff. Support me wherever you can. It's really just a click. It doesn't cost you a thing. Um, Patreon does cost you something, but what's a buck so that you can have these videos? I don't know. That's all I'm saying. Um, and uh, we're going to put some animals at the end as well. Thank you.